Hey, it's Heather here. I was going to finish what I was talking about in the previous video, and I'm going to try to label this or put a number or something on it. That way I remember where it's at, because I'm going to read the story that I wrote for my niece on this video. Um, because I had plenty of time while this other video, the previous video, was loading, because apparently... I don't know what the deal is with my damn phone. I don't know what the hell's going on. I know it said, you know, my high-speed data's gone for the month or what the fuck ever. But even at that, I've noticed when it sets closer to the heater, maybe it's because the phone's too cold. I don't know. It processes better and everything. It's less going on as it's infuriating. But I'm glad that I can at least upload videos. So yay, good for that because this is really beneficial for me, like to be able to talk and everything and get shit off my chest. Um, but anyways, uh, if you've made it through my last two or three videos, kudos to you, like, you know, good on you, and I appreciate it, and everything else, because I probably come across a little bit like a fucking maniac, and you're probably like, oh my god, is she crazy? And if you think that, then, you know, like, it is what it is, and you can think what you want to of me. I've done been labeled as so much shit by so many people. I don't even give a shit anymore. I do because my feelings hurt and I, I have a, I'm just really tender hearted and shit. But other than that, it's like, what the fuck ever. And if you notice, I always come across like defending myself like every fucking video kind of because I mean, I've just been taught that I can't trust anybody and I've been through hell in my life and everything. And, um, I only trusted my daughter with the bit that I was talking about, like, um, the songs that was stole from a notebook that I trashed, and I don't know who the hell is involved in all that, and then that's another thing, too. My best, my ex-best friend from when I was a little girl, her little brother grew up, and their grandmother lived across the street, her little brother grew up. And of course, I mean, he went to his grandmother's house or whatever, but he grew up and he actually was in a local band around here that done really well. I never heard their songs. I never listened to their songs. I doubt that he, you know, got into that or whatever and everything, like, because of something dealing with my songs or whatever. But it's like, and I doubt that he stole any of my songs, but he may... He may have been, like, tied into somehow somebody that did something. I don't know, musically speaking. Because I swear to God, these songs that I wrote, one of them became extremely popular, like, nationwide. And I was just like, she's going to die and go to hell. <laughs> like, and so you might think I'm crazy if you watch this video and you're just like, yeah, but... I'm going to go ahead and get into this story because I was really excited when I found it and I'm like really excited to share it. And I mean, it's just, it's a kid's story. And so it, you know, don't be like, oh, she thinks this is awesome and the best of the best and everything. But this is just to put it out there to show that I do have at least some form of talent in this way and everything. And like I said, I mean, I got a whole nother notebook that I've, don't you dare eat my cream of wheat. Um, but, um, <laughs> you're going to try to sneak it. Okay, never mind. Okay, set it over there. I fixed myself some cream of wheat to eat. But, um, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. And I, like, I don't even think I put a label on the book that I made for her. And it wasn't a book book because, like, I couldn't pay to go and... You know, I'm, I'm not driving, and I don't have anybody I can trust. And that's like even my mother, like, I tried to, um, this is a little sidetrack, but it's just a little tidbit of, because I'm, I'm surrounded by narcissists. I'm surrounded by greedy people. I'm surrounded by people who, if they think they can exploit me and use me and manipulate me, they're going to fucking do it. And I can't fucking get the hell away from them. And it's just like, I just need to hang myself so I can get the fuck away from them. But it's like, I want to be able to put my talent out into the world, and yeah, I would like to make money off of it. Who the fuck wouldn't, you know? But why the fuck can these other retards, because that's the way that I feel about them, is it's like, you're retarded at not finding out what you're good at, and you're good at something. Everybody is good at something. 
find out what the fuck it is, and take that shit and run with it. Run it into the ground, you know? Just run with it. Do something with it. But don't just sit there and be, like, sitting around being jealous of somebody that you see that's like, hey, you know, they're trying to be your friend, and they're like, what do you think of my talent? Do you think I'm good at it? And you're just like, ooh. Hmm. How can I steal this from them? You know, top shit. But... Anyways, like I said, if you've hung with me this long, if you've watched my videos, like, kudos to you, like, I fucking appreciate the hell out of it. You have no idea. And this might be the reason that I even get along with people that, like, you know, my cousin was, like, paranoid, schizophrenic, talking about shit, is because that's what my family has tried to put off on me and all kinds of shit. And like I said in my previous video or whatever, or I think that's the video that I lost, because I tried to shoot one in the middle of the other one uploading and it didn't. It just kicked it out. Um, I have been musically inclined all my life. Um, my dad was in the band and he played drums. Um, he used to drum all the time when I was a kid. Like on the side of the car as we're going down the fucking road. Like he still does that to this day. Um, they were all about, you know, me being this star, if you will. Um, there's videos of me singing when I was a kid, and that was the one thing that I could kind of do that was okay with my dad when he gave me the permission to. Um, in a video, as a matter of fact, he's like, Heather, sing for me. And I started, like, singing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, or, um, what is it? Um, oh, my God. Skin a marinky rinky dink skin a marinky do Anyways, like, I, I just, you know, I've always wanted to sing. And if my older family members that hadn't passed away were alive today, they could tell you that I always liked to sing. And when I wasn't getting my ass beat or handed to me or in trouble or being manipulated and just treated like shit by my parents. And then my mom being a narcissist and then my sister being the golden child. And so that was the only little bit of limelight that I got on myself, you know, from... And, like, it, it's just been bullshit. But... I always liked to sing. I always liked to dance. Um, I used to think that I was going to go to an art college whenever I, that was kind of away from us or whatever. Like, we're close to Atlanta. And, like, I was like, I'm going to go to the Atlanta Art College, you know, whenever I finish high school. That's where I'm going to go. I was in choir. Um, I was in band. I joined band in the sixth grade. I, my favorite class throughout elementary school was music class. I, I fucking adored it. I adored literature. I got better at it once I finally learned how to get over my dyslexia and how to read better. Um, I actually got to the point that I was over, by, by the time I went to go graduate, even though I dropped out of school, like halfway kind of in the year or the second semester or whatever, I didn't finish school because I was pregnant, I was stressed out, whatever, and I dropped out. Um... I'm getting really sidetracked, but I'm trying to hurry and get it all out. But I just got really sidetracked, really depressed, really, like, emotionally exhausted is the best way to put it because of everything I was going through. The pregnancy, being alone, um, the kid's dad was in prison, knowing he wasn't going to be there during any of my pregnancy or any of the first year of my child's life. Trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to do this around my family. If his family's going to help, apparently not. They're not calling. They don't care. Um, but it's like I've always been, you know, into um, music and stuff like that. Now, I didn't take drama. In, I didn't take drama classes in high school. And I refused to because I talked to people about it before. And I'm like, what happens in drama class? What do they do? And they're like, oh, improv, improv, improv is all we do. All day long, we just improvise. We just, you know, we're learning to do improv really good. Like, we do this, that, this, that. We have performances. But improv is, like, the biggest thing that our drama teacher focuses on. And I was like, I can't up under the pressure. I was like, fuck that shit. I was like, I'm not taking that. And so anyways, um... And I, I was really good at literature. I've always been really good at literature. And I was really good in those classes. And as a matter of fact, I remember even a book that we read one year. I don't know which grade it was. And we took a test. And you had to write the answers. Like it was no multiple choice whatever. 
And I made like an A++ on the test. And I was certain I was going to fail that bitch. And I had to read it because, um, like, I had to read it in a couple days because I, I hadn't been reading my book like I was supposed to. And so I literally read the book in three fucking days, crying full of it, and actually studied for it in fucking um, Saturday school. Because I had to go because I'd missed so many days, and I got out of it the week before because this was when my parents was split up. So I was 15. So I was 15 because this is when they were split up, and I had to have visitation with him that weekend. And so I missed the first one, but the second one... I just sat there and I wrote three pages of notes and my teacher got mad at me because I was supposed to be copying out of the dictionary after I wrote my notes, but I never got done with my notes. So when he had wanted us to turn in the um, paper where we had copied the dictionary, I had nothing to turn in and I just showed him my notes. So then the very next day was the test on the book and I got an A++ on it and the teacher pulled me aside and she's like, Heather. She's like, I have never seen somebody give in such detail the way that you did. She's like, you know, this is amazing. And she bragged on me. And she bragged on me in front of the whole class. And I was like, holy shit, I actually did something good enough to be bragged on. Like, damn. And another thing, too, that I remember about this teacher, because I remember my literature teachers better than I do anybody, because I was just very into literature and everything. Um... She also pulled me aside at the beginning of that semester when she first got to know me. And she's like trying to ask me if my report I turned in was actually mine. And I'm like, yes. And she's like, who did you pay to do it for you? And I'm like, nobody. And she's like, you're lying or whatever. And I was like, no, I'm not. And she's like, or she didn't really get into that. Actually, I think she pulled me up and she said, write your name or something like that. So I wrote my name. And then she said, write your name in cursive or something like that. And I wrote it in cursive. Well, when I write in print, my words slant one way. And when I write in cursive, my words slant the other way. And so she thought I didn't do my report. And then she's like, write something else for her. And she seemed that it actually was my handwriting because the report had to be written in cursive. And when she seen that and realized that or whatever, like, I don't remember exactly how it went, but she's just like, oh my God, you know? And she's like, you're so unique. She's like, that is so unique. I've never seen somebody who has two completely different ways of writing, you know, like, you know, like that, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, like, I thought she was getting on to me, and I was like, well, I can, I can make my, um, cursive slant the same way as my, you know, print, I was like, but it's a little harder on me, I was like, but I can do it, you know, if I need to, and she's like, no, and she like, I think she grabbed my hand and placed my hand, like, in her hands, and she's like, no, she's like, that's unique, and she's like, don't don't change that about yourself or something like that and I was just like oh you know I was like oh my god thank you and so anyways so I've always been into literature um music has always been in the family um my dad played the drums when he was in school um my grandmother has talked about how um she used to want to be into music and singing and stuff like that so that's his mom and then on my mom's side of the family, my papa was actually in a band, a local band around here called the Swing Masters Band. And he played the mandolin. And then my Uncle Jackie, everybody made fun of him because he was eccentric and stuff. And he has got online and put up some weird, weird, just eccentric, you know, music and stuff. And he always tried to, you know, get my family and his, his side of the family, so it would have been my mom and his sister with him, you know, to be supportive, and they never were. They always made fun of him. And so then when it come out that I like music and stuff like that, and then here I am with this left ear audio shit, and I had to take IEP classes to learn how to read and be better at math and shit, they're like, oh, she's retarded like Jackie. And so that, that's that been the gist of it. And so I've been bullied by my own family and treated like shit. And I'm fucking 30 years old. 
and my body's falling apart, and I like to dance, and I fell and busted my ankle out here, and not been able to go to the doctor for it, and I'm like, I'm never going to be able to dance now. That dream's shot is what I feel like. And then I'm like, no, it's not, no, it's not. Don't do that to yourself. You can go to the doctor, or you can push past it. You'll be all right. You can learn to dance if you want to, you know. And I've been such a dedicated mother to my kid and everything, and I adore my fucking kid, and I would never trade that for anything. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Like, I really wouldn't. I love my child. But anyway, so I've been in, um, I've, I've always liked music class in elementary school. When they asked, what's your favorite class, I like music. And, you know, and then literature, you know. And so I got into sixth grade, and it was like, oh, I'm going to join the band, and I'm going to be just like my dad, and I'm going to play the drums, and then he's going to like me, and he's going to not be mean to me anymore, and he's going to, you know. And I got in there, and, like, they didn't want people. They had too many people wanting to play the drums is what it was. And so they was pushing kids that were pushable onto other instruments. So I got pushed on to play in the cl clarinet. And I actually wanted to play the flute, but then they had too many people wind up doing the flute, and then they was like, oh, the way that your lips are and your chin, you know, it's going to be hard on you or whatever. So they was like, here, play the clarinet. So that's what I got stuck playing. And so I played the clarinet for a year and a half. And halfway through seventh grade, I was like, fuck this shit. I hate band. I hate my band teacher. Everybody talks about the choir teacher and how she's so nice. And I was like, so I'm going to join choir. And so I did. And so from there on out, all the way up until I fucking left school, I was always, I always took chorus class. At least one chorus class a year. I tried to, like, come hell or high water. And then um, my choir teacher, um, his name was Mr. Cox, um, like, I adored the hell out of him. And, like, um, there was this solo that came up when I was, like, in my, um, sophomore or junior junior year and we were supposed to be goofing off this day we were having a free day as we call it well the girls we were just sitting bored and like we had this song that you know it had a solo part and it was like hey let's you know let's do this let's see about you know like singing it and see if we can do it better you know or whatever and memorize it better and stuff and so we all started singing and i remember like i was standing there kind of directing people and the teacher come out and when he did like he just stood there like in shock you know and i was just like what did i do wrong and he's like you know nothing and he's like and i i'd sung the solo part and when I sung the solo part, I had two of the guys, because they were in their own world doing their own shit, the guys were, I had two of the guys come up to me and beg me to do the solo. They were like, please, you know, you, you sung it so good and everything. And I was like, I probably won't even be able to come to the concert. I was like, because it's out of the way and my parents probably won't even bring me. And I remember people went to, um, they went to the camp that summer or whatever. Like, we were invited to go to a camp that summer or maybe it was two weeks during school. I don't know. Some type of camp. I don't even remember because, I mean, hell, it's been years ago. And I was like, I can't, you know, my family is not going to be supportive. They're not supportive of me. They're not supportive of that. You know, I can't, and it won't happen, and it's not like I'm like my sister. Like, they supported her. They they let her go to a fucking cheer camp, you know, and all kinds of shit, and I'm like, they're not going to do that with me. Like, I couldn't even have a conversation with them. Like, maybe if I would have went to my father and been like, hey, you know, maybe he would have been like, yeah, I'll think about it. But my mom had done convinced him that I was, like, completely and totally retarded by the time I was, like, seven. And... Because I've been put in IEP classes. And I had a left ear audio thing or what the fuck ever. So it's like, oh, she's retarded. And that, that's even whenever, that's another thing too. Like, I quit school one reason because I heard them bitching about how they were going to pay for my graduation. Because they didn't expect for me to graduate on time. I literally heard that come out of my dad's mouth. Like, well, I guess I'm going to have to sell my motorcycle. You know, and well, I guess I'll have to sell it. That way we can pay for her to graduate. I wasn't expecting her to graduate on time. I mean, that's not nothing you want to hear from your fucking parents, you know? Like, 
and it was just bullshit. And so anyways, my dad done thought I was retarded by the time I was seven, so because of that, I never felt like I could talk to him, even if I wanted to, about anything, and then the amount of abuse, and then any time I tried to be close to him, it's like it would come across like he thought I was giving him permission to, like, be perverted towards me, so I just, I, no, you know, like, you're disgusting, and so that was the end of that, and then with my mom, it's like, narcissist and sorry you can't be good because you're the scapegoat child and you're going to be retarded and your sister is the genius over here that can do it all you know but anyways um so I was in choir and all kinds of stuff like that so I've had a background it's not like I'm somebody that's just like oh you know I have no background of ever wanting to do this or be this or you know and then all of a sudden so, if you think I'm crazy, you know, or whatever, then whatever. But I'm going to read this little story. And if I cry, please forgive me. Because it was, I mean, if I cry, just forgive me. But um, I wrote this for my niece. And I wrote this for her in September of last year. And then my parents took custody of my daughter in December of, well, it's not December yet this year, but of last year. So, I feel like because I'd never shown my talent to them in any way, shape, or form, and like I said in the previous video, I have another notebook full of shit that I've wrote over the past few years, and I wake up all the time with these things in my head, like these rhymes and this shit that I want to say, and I can't find paper and pencil quick enough, and then I'm discouraged emotionally, and so I'm like, hey, well, I don't even do any good to write it down. So unless it's something really prominent that stands out, I don't even write it down. And then I get mad at myself and kick myself in the ass for it, because I'm like, that rhymed and made sense and sounded really decent in comparison to somebody that don't know how to do that, you know? But here I go with my um, story that I wrote for my... Um, oldest niece, um, and like I said in the previous video, I wrote a book when I was taking child development classes. It was our end of grade, and I ended up, even though I was underage, signing the rights over to the teacher so she could have it published, and there's been a spinoff from the book and stuff. But I wrote this, uh, gave this to my niece September of last year. So September of 2018, and then in December of 2018, my parents took temporary custody of my child. And I feel like they did that because I'm supposed to be quiet, and I'm supposed to let people manipulate me, and I'm supposed to go to the crazy house and let them get a check, you know, because, oh, they got the crazy daughter or what the fuck ever. And I'm supposed to disappear and be hit up under the rug like something that they're ashamed of. And, or, and then, like, if I do come to them with this, it's like, oh, here's something you can use, and you can act like you did it so you can exploit me and use me for your own greedy purposes or whatever. So please, you know, just bear with whatever. Like I said, if you made it this far, kudos, you know, like, great job on you, all that. Because I know I, I can step outside of myself and I can look back and be like, whoa, I'm, I'm very passionate and I just come across just very, you know. That's because I've been through so much. And um, my niece's name is Michaela and her nickname's KK and my daughter's name's Ava. And I started this um, story like at the beginning kind of dealing with my daughter because I wanted to make sure that my daughter doesn't feel um, neglected in any way. Or left out in any way even though me and her actually wrote a song together that's in my notebook it's called 14 o'clock <laughs> because it's just it's a silly song and um but uh I because my sister has like my sis my daughter has never spent the night at my sister's house and my daughter's 12 my nieces have spent the night with me. My youngest niece has spent the night with me like two times, I think. My oldest niece has spent the night with me I don't know how many times. And so my daughter feels like 
her aunt doesn't love her and my nieces, I know that they know that I love them. And so that's the reason I tied my daughter into the beginning of the story was to make sure that she doesn't feel, because she's kind of been like, you know, she's put the blame on me, like maybe I should be meaner to my nieces since my sister's mean to her. And I'm like, I can't do that, baby. <clears throat> so here I go with this story. And if it doesn't, you know, come across completely like really good, then sorry. And it's kind of long. I'm going to sip something to drink because my throat's dry and I'm sitting in front of the heater trying to stay warm. And like I said, if I cry, forgive me. And my niece cried when I gave it to her after her birthday. So, yeah. There once was a little girl who was expecting a little cousin. Her cousin was born, and she was beautiful, cute, and adored. The cousins seen each other as often as they could. Growing up like sisters, they both were very good. The oldest of the cousins was confused when her aunt moved, and she took someone very special who ate a lot of food. Where is my friend? Where did she go? Ava, your aunt was her owner, so now you need to know. Even though you loved her dearly and she wasn't yours to keep, when KK isn't visiting, she protects your cousin in her sleep. She still loves you and you took... Yeah, and you taught her good to be gentle with babies as any doggy should. She now plays with KK and kisses her in the face. And she's so sweet to her, but still she didn't let her steal your space. Penelope was your friend first, but now she's Michaela's too. And no matter what, that dog loves both of you. Days passed and KK grew, and Penelope got older, you see. But during her times away from us, she's with KK as it should be. She kisses Michaela's belly and rolls around in the dirt. And when her dad yells or screams, she looks at him like, you jerk. She sits and shakes and begs, so cute like she always did. But when Michaela's upset or scared, she says, I love you, my kid. She can't say it with words, but she says it with her eyes. She licks away snotty boogers and sits with KK and sighs. Her sighs tell Michaela, it is okay. You'll be all right. I'm here with you. And no matter what, I won't leave your side. She was trained so well she would fetch, swim, run, and jump, and play. She was a very special doggy, as everyone would say. But sadly, a day did come when Penelope didn't feel too good. Brandy took her to the vet like any good pet owner should. They said they didn't know for sure, and here's some medicine. And even though you try so hard, some battles you just can't win. Penelope ended up passing away, and it was sad and didn't feel good. But her spirit went to heaven, as we all knew it would. That is where she is now, laying with shadow again. Looking down on all of us to make sure we grin. She knows life is hard, and we miss her daily. But she knows we'll be together again, because we are her family. She sits and waits patiently for the day we come home. She keeps busy with Granny, Papa, Misty, and even Miss Han. She runs and plays and jumps and laughs, and now has a voice all her own. And when she sees you crying, she says you're not alone. She says it to all of us every time she sees that we are sad. She says don't worry, one day you'll be eternally glad. One day you'll be with me again, and I'll still love you so. 
I'm going to play fetch again. One day, God will call you home. I can wait to see you because your time is not now. But no matter what, I'll always be your pal. I'm surprised I made it through that without crying. But, um, yeah, like, I wrote that for my niece because my niece, every time she would come over, bless it, she would sit and cry at night. Like, if, if my daughter went to bed before my niece, which sometimes she did, sometimes she did, um, she would always confide in me. And we'd be sitting here, you know, we'd be watching TV or something. And because I have dogs and my niece, that's the only dog that she had ever had in her whole life. And its name was Penelope. Um, and the dog died when, let's see, I think my niece was three. She might have been four. But I don't think she was older than four. And it devastated her. And plus another thing, too, is I don't think that her mother really kind of talked to her about death and stuff. And then um, my family, because we was raised Baptist and everything, and my grandmother, oh, my God, I've gotten to fights with my grandmother about it. She's like, when you go to heaven, you're not going to know anybody. Nobody's going to know anybody. There's going to be no pain, no suffering. You're not going to know anybody. You're never going to know anybody. And that's the end of it. And I'm like, oh, hey, well, that's you and that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But my opinion's different. Like, I'm not 100% certain that that may not eventually happen, you know, or will happen or whatever. But I'm pretty certain that when we die, God is, I mean, imagine how... When you die, if you go to heaven, heaven is supposed to be the happiest that you can be, right? That's what heaven's supposed to be. How is God going to get you that happy? Just by erasing your memory? Or just by letting you see that everyone that you've ever worried about, that has died and passed away, that they are okay? You get what I'm saying? So, we've argued relentlessly about that topic and so I'm just like I'm not talking to you about this anymore you have your opinion stay over there I have mine bye you know but um so I wrote that for my niece for her birthday last year and um then it wasn't long after my parents took custody of my daughter and I'm like y'all did that because my niece exposed that to y'all and you're like oh my god that proves she's insane because she's talking about a dog talking you know and i believe in souls and i believe that they have brains and i believe that it's like you know if they think something stinks then it stinks if they think something smells good then it smells good and they can't look at you and be like it smells good they're not going to verbally say it but then there's people out there that are like, oh, you know, I can read this dog's thoughts and this dog's mind and its opinion and stuff like that. And sometimes I've kind of felt that way about my pets. And I'm like, shut up. Like, I know, I know. Like, I know, like, you don't, your face tells it all. Like, I can, you know. And then being empathic and being an empath and stuff like that. But, and that's the thing too, whenever we was going to court for me to get my daughter back, my sister kept showing up with my oldest niece every single time. And I was like, yeah, if it gets to where we're sitting talking about stuff, they're going to try to bring this up and be like, see, see, this proves that she's insane. This proves that she's insane because she says that the dog can talk. And she says this and she says that. And she says that the dog is up in heaven playing with people that have passed away that we've known in this world and that proves she's insane and shit like that that is my religious viewpoint that is my belief that is where i stand and so that should not be any type of reasoning dealing with why the hell my child is taken from me <clears throat> and so it's just been bullshit the whole life's just been bullshit i guess but um that's just an example and, I mean, you know, that was written from a perspective that's, like, supposed to be child-friendly and everything. And the reason I say at the end, you know, um, 
I wrote that, you know, I can wait. You know, like, and I'm speaking, like, from the dog's point of view and everything. Shit. I lost what page it's on. I've got notebooks on notebooks of just shit I wrote. So I'm just like, can I stop writing? But then I like to write. But, um... Anyways, like I said, you know, my niece and everything, like, I wrote that. Oh, there it is. The last thing is I said, um, on the, in the book or whatever that I wrote for my niece is, I can wait to see you because your time is not now. But no, no matter what, I'll always be your pal. Because my niece, like I said, she confided in me when she was over here spending the night. And there was times that she would be up. And there's even one time that she kept this. And that's the thing, too. My niece. Okay, my daughter became friends with this one kid. Like, really good friends with her. And so they were spending the night all the time. Mainly her friend was spending the night over here all the time. But... It got to the point that my daughter started kind of spending the night over there just as often. And so, this um, other friend of my daughter's came over and she like literally spent like three nights. And then, um, her mom came to pick her up and then she asked her mom, she's like, Hey, can Ava spend the night at my house? And it's like, yeah, you know, that's fine. And so, you know, and I was like, I get a break from all of y'all. You know, y'all been over here for three damn days. And that, that's the thing, too, is I actually had a few days that my niece was over here with my kid and her friend. And they'd all three spend the night here. Like, these kids have had slumber parties. Like, I, you know, I'm all about a kid being a kid type shit, you know, and everything. But... So, my niece calls one night, and I hadn't heard from her in a minute, and her dad gets her every other weekend, and her mom won't let her do anything during the week most of the time, and so, every other weekend, and it had been, like, for the past few months, every other weekend, well, it's like that's the way it was with my daughter spending the night with her friend. So, my daughter would be spending the night with her friend whenever my niece would want to come and spend the night. And so whenever she would call and ask, I'd be like, no, baby, you know, or no, baby. And I was saying no to my niece. And it never occurred to me to not say no to her because I just thought she wouldn't want to spend the night because my daughter wasn't here. You know, I just, I literally thought that, like, in the back of my head. Like, she'd call and she'd be like, Auntie Heather, can I spend the night? And I'd be like, no, baby, Ava's not home. No, Ava, baby's, I mean, no, baby, no, no, Ava, no, baby, Ava's not home, Ava's at her friend's, and so this was going on all the time, and it went on for a couple months, and so one night she called, and she said, I think she said it different, I think she said, you know, or she had my mom call, you know, and my mom called and was like, hey, you know, Michaela's wanting to know if she can spend the night, come over there and spend the night with Ava, and I was like, Ava's over at her friend's house, I was like, so she's not here tonight, I said, but she'll be here tomorrow night, and I said, and I know Michaela's got the whole weekend, I said, so she can come over tomorrow night and spend the night with Ava, and I was like, and if, if Ava's friend stays again, I guess I can handle all three of them again, even though I just got rid of them for three days, the two girls, and my mom's like, that kid's spending way too much time over there, and I'm like, but she likes Ava, and Ava likes her, and they're friends, and I see nothing wrong with it, and whatever, you know, and they're getting along, and, you know, and she's fairly respectful when she's over here. There was a few things that she'd do, like she'd leave trash kind of piled up sometimes, you know, and I'd be like, throw it away, you know, like, don't leave it sitting there, put it in the trash can, you know, but other than that, everything was good, and, um, so... My niece gets on the phone or whatever. I hear her in the back and she's like, can I get on the phone? Can I talk to Auntie Heather or something like that? You know, and my mom's like, yeah. And so she gives the phone to my niece and my niece is like, um, Ava's not there tonight. And I'm like, no, baby. I'm like, she's over at a friend's house. And she's like, oh, okay. And then she sat there and she got real quiet. And then she and it kind of, you know, and it kind of startles me, like, the issues that I've had with my family and my dad. And I've always worried about both my nieces 
and my dad and him kind of being perverted and shit and everything and it's just oh it's making me nauseous even saying that right now but um and I've always, you know, tried to talk to them in private, you know, and be like, are you okay, you know, especially my oldest niece whenever she became older. My youngest niece, like, I've not even, because she's she's a pistol like me, like I was, and she's a Leo like me, so I guarantee you that she would, she would tell at a very young age if something was going on with her, I do believe, unless she was, like, petrified, scared to death. But, um, so... I get on the phone with my oldest niece that night, and she's like, Ava's not there, and I'm like, no, baby, she's not, and she's like, oh, okay, and she sat there, and she got quiet, and I was just waiting for her to say whatever she wanted to say, and then she's like, well, can I still come spend the night, and I was like, yeah, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, and I was like, but you understand Ava's not here, right? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, you understand that Auntie's not going to stay up all night, even though I do when y'all are here together, because I got to watch y'all, you know. I was like, but Auntie can't stay up to 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, I was like, Auntie's got to go to bed. And she's like, yeah, you know. And I was like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah. She's like, I want to spend the night. And what time's Ava coming home tomorrow? You know, and I was like, I'm not sure. And she's like, well, that's okay. And I'm like, well, you can watch whatever movies you want and eat whatever you want, and I'll fix you, you know, a bag of popcorn and some candy, you know, or whatever and stuff. And so, like, she come and she spent the night with me. And, like, I've never, you know, and this this was all, you know, the past year before my kid was taken from me. And I've never in my life, like, I, I, it's like, it's kind of like, I knew I was a cool aunt, but I didn't know I was so cool that my niece would come spend the night with me of her own free will. You get what I'm saying? Like, and I was just like, holy shit. And like my niece, like I've even teased her before. And I used to ask her all the time, just teasing her, be like, who's, whose house is better? And she, she would just do her finger and like point down and be like, and I'd be like, and who's cooler? And she just you know, or she'd point at me, you know, and I'm like, and who do you love, you know, and stuff like that and everything, because I just, I love kids, I love kids, and that's another thing, too, like, when my oldest niece was born, I uh, wasn't working, when my youngest niece has been born, I've been working, so I've not been able to be as close with her, and I've actually cried a lot about it, and told her that I'm sorry for working, because I've missed seeing her and visiting with her and stuff but my oldest niece um I wasn't working and so I got stuck babysitting her a lot and then I had a miscarriage like my niece was born when my daughter was like 18 months old like a year and a half old and I had a miscarriage when my daughter was two or around that time or no, maybe my daughter was older than that. Shit, I can't even remember right now. I ain't even gonna lie. My mind's kind of fried. But anyways, I remember looking at my niece and being like, Now, God, why why did you let my, my sister have a kid? You know, and why couldn't you let me have that kid? You know, and why did I have to lose my baby? And here's my baby wanting a sibling and this is my first, you know, like, my oldest niece is my first, you know, sis, my sister's first child, you know. And I was like, isn't it wrong that, like, you know, that my child doesn't have a sibling and she's this age and, you know, I've always wanted her to and I had a miscarriage. And, and so sometimes I've even wondered, I'm like... You know, for as far as souls and stuff, I'm like, did did my baby that I miscarried, did its soul go into my niece, you know, or whatever? Even though the timing, you know, is off a little and stuff, but still, you know, I'm just like, what the hell, God? You know, why, why did you do this to me, you know? Because it was really hard. I ain't even gonna lie, for like the first year of my niece's life, my oldest niece's life, it was really hard for me to look at her sometimes and not just break down crying because I was like, where's my baby? You know, where's my baby? And so I would like, I, I would like detach myself when I would get in that mindset and I'd go into the bathroom and I'd cry and I'd force myself over it, you know. 
And I'd be like, that's my niece, though. That's my niece, though, you know. And I remember her dad, um, he, he's in the uh, National Guard, and so he left. Like, when my niece was a year old or whatever, I think. He left, and he was gone overseas. And when he came back, like, months later or something, or I don't even know how long he was gone or where he was gone, or I think he was overseas. I don't know where he was. I'll be honest. All I know is he was gone when she was little, and they were living with us. And that's another thing, too. That's another reason I got really close to her, and she got really close to me. Something happened to her at, like, his party or a party or something. And something happened to her. And when she got hurt or scared or whatever, and, like, he had just, he had been months without seeing her. And so she was all over him and everything. But something happened at the party where she, I don't know if she got stung by something or whatever, but something happened that startled her, and she ran to me. And I picked her up, and I was like, oh, baby, you know, and I was kissing all on her. I was like, let me see, you know, I think she hurt her toe or something. I was like, oh, let me see the boo-boo, you know, and I got her to laughing and giggling. And I remember looking up and meeting eyes with my brother-in-law, and... I could just tell, I was like, "Uh uh-oh, I did something wrong. And I was like, and in the back of my head, I was like, dude, I'm sorry that you weren't here and that she attached herself to me. And so, and I've had to play mom and dad for my kids. So now I'm kind of dad to my niece, you know, because you hadn't been here to be dad. And my sister sure as hell can't play mom and dad both, you know, like my sister's just one of those that's too feminine you know or whatever and so I was like dude you know I'm sorry like I I I remember like he was giving me a go to hell look is the best way to word it and I was just like fuck you you know I was like you wasn't here you know and you should be appreciative that I was willing to fill that role for her while you were gone you know but that's another thing too even my brother-in-law my brother-in-law if he cared to which there's no probably caring I don't know one day he come home when they were all living there and I didn't know he pulled up outside like I heard somebody pull up and I was just like I don't know if that's somebody here or if that's somebody someplace else and I was outside singing like I said on the back porch it's a little tiny porch I used to write in my notebook and I was out there singing and Who knows, maybe he stole the fucking shit. I don't know. But I was out there singing, and when he walked past me, or no, I take it back. I take it back. I was in the house singing. That's right. I was in the house singing. And I was in my room, and I thought I heard somebody pull up, but when I looked, I didn't see anybody. And so I was just like, oh, that ain't nobody. So I kept on singing and everything. And he come in, and like, when he come in, like, I got quiet. And then I kind of snuck out, because he snuck in real quiet. And I was like, you know, is somebody here or am I just hearing things? That's like how quiet he was. And so he, he come out of his bedroom because like our bedrooms were across the way from each other. And I was in mine and I was singing and I had the door shut. And I thought I heard him pull up outside, looked out the window, didn't see nobody, kept singing. My door shut to my bedroom. Then it sounds like somebody's in the house. And I'm like, okay. And so I come out of the room and I'm like, I don't know if that's him or not. And why, you know, and he's goofy and stuff anyways. And I was like, I guess he, he's here. I don't know if he's here or not. And he comes out of his room, like the door was shut to his room. And he comes out of his room and he's like, he said something along the lines of not nice singing. And I was just like, thanks, you know. Because I didn't want to confide in him and be like, hey, I like to write music and sing songs and you want to be a good brother-in-law and help me out because I don't trust people. I don't trust nobody, you know, to be like, hey, help me fuel the fire to do what I want to do, you know, and everything. And so, you know, that I just read my niece's book that I wrote her to kind of keep people up to date with the hell that I've been through and the way that I get treated and the fact that, yes, I can... I can't at least write. I can't at least, you know, and there's a whole notebook full of songs and the songs are way more advanced than that because like I said, this is like a child's book, you know, and everything. And 
I don't know why I'm alive. I don't know what my purpose is. Sometimes I've actually thought that my purpose is to just put shit out there for people to steal or to be greedy about or whatever or be mean or be hateful or be like, yeah, she's crazy, you know, and it's like, no, I'm not, you know. And I and then I don't have the intellect to, you know, get on a computer and do all this and do all that. And I don't have a computer. I don't have the money to have a computer. I don't have the money to have Wi-Fi. I don't have the money to have Internet. I'm not going to go over and lean on people for everything that I need. I was taught to do shit myself. That's even like at fucking work. My manager one night. She's working drive through I'm working front counter. Um, our, uh, fountain machine or whatever, soda machine out in lobbies fucked up, okay? So we're having to make the drinks from the drive through This is when construction was going on at the store. So we're having to make drinks from the drive through And every time I get a drink, I'm walking my ass over to drive through even though she's just standing there in drive through because there's not that many people ordering. I mean, she's cleaning, but she's just, she's not doing anything to, um... Uh, serve a customer, I guess is the best way to word it. And so um, I'm walking over there and I'm making the drinks and I'm having a lot of front counter customers, you know. And she just looks at me one night and she's like, I can get that. I can, I can get that for you. You can tell me what the drink is and I can make the drink for you since I'm just kind of standing here. And I was like, I know. I was like, but you don't, like, I know, I know I can ask for your help, but I feel like I can't, because I feel like if I would have from day one been like, hey, I need this, hey, I need that, hey, I need, she would have been like, what a presumptuous little asshole, and then she would have been talking shit about me behind my back and being like, you know, every night since the uh, soda machine lobby, every night you know, that uh, we've been working since then, and she needs a drink, she just hollers at me for what she wants. Like, I've done walked the negative path of everything with everybody, and usually for the saddest, most brokenhearted, pathetic, bullshit story life you could ever hear, it's been with my family for the most part. So it's like, no, I'm not going to ask you to make the drinks. I'm going to make the fucking drinks my damn self. And so then, I, like, she got mad at me. Like, she's like, I can do this. I can help you. Let me help you. She's like, you're running around like crazy. And I was like, I, I got it, though. And so then I started asking her to help me with that. And then I'll be damned, like, it just got to where it's like, oh, well, she likes to run around like crazy. So, you know what? We're going to make her do three job positions for 45 minutes tonight. Well, I go out and have a smoke break and talk to my friend over here, and this person's on break or whatever. And it's like, just because I'm capable of doing three job positions for 45 fucking minutes, doesn't mean you should put me in that situation. And emotionally and physically, I'm really not capable of it. My health is shit. I've had a mini stroke, I'm almost certain. I have a busted ankle I'm walking around on, and it's fucking up my leg, and it's making my femur bone hurt, okay? Like, you know, like, my, my, my physical health is not up to par, and my emotional health is not up to par, so even though, I don't know what it would be, my mentality, there you go. Even though my mentality is, I got this, I can do this, I can do three job positions for 45 minutes and we're all cash only so that's just another thing all in its fucking self even though it's like yes i can do this it's like don't don't manipulate me and push me and set me in that situation because physically and emotionally i can't do it and that's the reason i get stressed out i break down and i usually end up leaving my jobs is because i'm just like really you're trying to use me you're trying to exploit the good in me. You're like, hey, this one thing's good in you. And even though for you to be a good, well-off, rounded person and have a great life, we're just going to take this one thing out of you and just pull it out of you, you know. And it's like, don't do that to me. Let me, help me be good at other things, you know. Help me be good and, like, well-rounded and, you know. And then it's like, people don't want to do that. And people are, I don't know. 
it's just bullshit but i'm coming up on an hour for this video um so i'm gonna end it here and everything i might shoot another one later today i honestly have an idea um if you liked my little story that i wrote for my niece you know um i'd appreciate you know like somebody maybe saying something if they do happen to like it because i don't get i don't get credit for anything that i do most of the time like i get the credit of the um physicality of it like you know, if I go to work and I work my job and I get the money, then it's like, yay, the, the, that's the physical. But for as far as the, you did a good job, the emotional, I never, I'm like starved. I'm literally starved to death for the emotional of, wow, you know, and you did good. And I never got that as a kid. I remember I would rarely on occasion get that from my grandmother, which is still alive. Um, she used to, she used to dote on me like really hard, but then she wouldn't. And so it's kind of like the narcissist thing too. They'll sit there and they'll be like, oh, you did an amazing job behind closed doors because it's just you and them and they're wanting to manipulate you. But then whenever you come out and you're like trying to show other people and you're like, hey, they said I did great at this. They're like, I never said nothing. But it's like my grandmother, she's bragged on me for training dogs. She thinks that um, I should be a dog trainer. Um, she's bragged on me for how well I trained my dogs and how well they used to be trained because I've not worked with them. And it's like an everyday thing, just like a kid. Like you got to constantly be like, no, you can't push the boundaries. The rules are the rules. And so she's like, oh, you're good at that. And I used to go over and get on her porch and play TLC. Oh, my God. And don't go chasing waterfalls. And I used to sing that song all the fucking time and dance to it. Me and my best friend. And um, she loved that fucking song put out by, oh, hell, what's their name? I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life is plastic. It's fantastic. You can tell. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> but she she loved that song as much as I love TLC. Don't go chasing waterfalls or waterfalls or whatever. And like we used to get out there and dance and stuff. And my grandmother would dance with me and stuff. But my grandmother took it more as just child play. And even though she would kind of one time she tried to tell my mom and my dad that, like, I was good at dancing, like, they didn't give a shit, you know? Like, you, you learn that that's impractical and that's not what you're supposed to care about and everything. And then since my papa on my mom's side of the family, like I said, he was in a band called, a local band around here called the Swing Masters. So I guess she's seen him give up his dreams and stuff and everything and be more practical and logical. And my papa was in the Air Force, and so, you know, it was like, that's not going to put food on the table. That's just a hobby. And then to have hobbies that are that big, that take that much, you know, time and everything, and trying to be a single mom, and I would not trade that for shit. Like, if, if God was like, you can never write poetry, sing, or dance, or anything like that again, and as a matter of fact, we're going to take music away from you completely, you know, and that's the only way you can have your kid, I would just be like, okay, like, let me have my kid, like, kid is way more important than any of that shit, even though that's what I enjoy, and that's who I am, but I'm just, I'm tired of not I'm tired of not knowing what my purpose is and stuff. And I'm tired of being unhappy. And I'm tired of not taking care of me. And I'm tired of being emotionally starved. And I'm tired of people not getting it. And I don't even know if the people watching this get this. But if you do, thank you fucking Jesus. Like, is all I can say. Because it's about damn time. But, um... I'm going to end it here, and so if you like my videos, you can comment, and you can share, you can like, you can subscribe. Um, I've said in, before in previous videos that if you put a like, that that's going to be like a form of encouragement to me. But then I realized that when you put a like, it puts it up under your stuff as a liked video. And so I don't know if anything resonates with you that well on that deep of a level that you want to put it up under your like. So if you don't want to do that, then just, hell, just give me like a little thumbs up in a comment, you know, like I appreciate any type of good feedback, you know, and everything. Cause like I said, like I'm emotionally starved.
is the best way to put it. And so, yeah. But, um, and if anybody needs somebody to talk to, you know, or whatever, because like I said, I'm getting on here and I'm vlogging and talking about my shit and everything. If you need somebody to talk to, you know, or whatever, you can message me on my Facebook and I'll respond as soon as I can. But my phone's being fucked up right now. I ain't even going to lie. But other than that, like, I'm cool with trying to find friends and like-minded people and people I can get along with and stuff like that. And I'll catch you later because it's over an hour. <laughs>